Combat as Coke Pepsi rival Street Fighter, was combining the characters in different smackdowns. They're trying to construct a plot that links them as a fatal trap. The cheesy Mortal Kombat uh, back in 1995 from the future Resident Evil director Paul W.S. Anderson proved as much. And now there's Mortal Kombat 2021, directed by Simon McQuoid, a snazzier, marginally more coherent movie that features a less catchy version of the techno theme song. The backbeat, like the screenplay, is peppered with catchphrases from the game. Tess, you might. The 21st century Mortal Kombat begins in 17th century Japan, where great warrior Hanzo Hasashi, played by Hiroyuki Sanada, is vanquished and his wife and son killed. Less comes to this than you might expect. Flash forward to the present, and Cole Young, played by Louis Tan, a cage fighter whose telltale birthmark destined him to compete in a tournament called Mortal Kombat. They spelt it wrong, he observes. Before representing Earthrealm against Outworld, the most brutal and murderous of all the realms, he and similarly branded comrades must uncover their inner superpowers. But with so many characters, the movie spends too much time on discovery and not enough on showing those powers in action. Personally, I wanted more payoff from Sonya Blade, uh, played by Jessica McNamee, Dodge and Kata, Joss Lawson, and his laser eye. But you can choose your fighters to feel shortchanged accordingly. While the carnage demonstrates some imagination, can ice really cauterize wounds? Did a hat just turn into a table saw? The rules extending even to whether death is permanent are so arbitrary that nothing matters. So kind of test your patience. Alert. 2021 Mortal Kombat reboot doesn't actually feature Mortal Kombat, the fighting tournament to save Earth depicted in the video games. Strangely, it's not the only franchise entry with this distinction. The disastrous 1997 sequel Mortal Kombat Annihilation picks up after the tournament in Paul W.S. Anderson's competent original, while the largely forgotten 1998 TV show Conquest, the first season of the short-lived 2010's web series Legacy, about events leading up to the tournament. This new film, the first directed by Simon McQuoid, sort of falls in that latter category, with characters jumping the gun getting to the fighting right away, without being limited by the structure of the tournament and the roles of the Elder Gods which in theory should be an exciting prospect. After all, the fights are why most people care in the first place to come watch the movie. But the result is a big budget Hollywood production that feels like a fan made prequel. If you've seen the trailer, you probably have one question in mind. How awesome is the blood knife? Well, it's pretty awesome. How can you be mad at Sub-Zero, played with straight face intensity by the great star, Joe Taslin, drawing blood from his opponent and freezing it into a handheld weapon and stabbing him with it. Isolate that one action beat, a small handful of others, and a couple of jokes, you've got yourself a fun five minute supercut to share with your friends. As part of a two hour movie though, Blood Knife only arrives after an hour and a half from really mind numbing filmmaking. It's a long movie with some long drawn out characters, even in the rare moments when it's visually comprehensive. None of that would really matter if the series was handled with finesse. But sadly, the biggest sin committed by Mortal Kombat 2021 is the action is pretty limited. <laughs> the film opens with the promise of something polished, with the 17th century origins of the blood feud between Sub-Zero, played by Taslin, and Scorpion, played by Hiroyuki Sanada. This prologue adds surprising dramatic heft to two characters, who in the games are essentially different skins on the same physical model, and it feels like something out of a prestigious period drama about mysticism and vengeance. It's also a weird way to start a movie in which Sub-Zero and Scorpion are only in the end scene. Something seems off from the get-go. In modern day, we're introduced to a brand new character created for the film. Cole Young, played by Louis Tan, an audience point of view avatar to bring us into this world of interdimensional martial arts. Young, a husband and a father, is down on his luck cage fighter who agrees to bouts for measly pay until he's suddenly roped up in all the torment shenanigans by existing franchise mainstays like Sonya Blade, 
played by Jessica McNamee, and a robot arm Jax, played by Mafcad Brooks, who already know the in and outs of the lore. Young is an outsider to the proceedings, and time plays him with a Keanu-esque mix of confusion and sincerity in the meta occasion, which is great. He's fairly likable, but he's also completely unnecessary for one key reason. Who, in the year of our Lord 2021, needs to be introduced to Mortal Kombat like it's a novel or a complicated concept. The film also ropes in a number of great actors like Tananubu Asano as Lord Raiden and Chin Han as the villainous Shang Tsung, who you can't help but feel sympathy for given the material. They show up and deliver their lines. I hope they got paid handsomely for it. The final verdict is a 5 out of 10, or a B minus. I really wanted to love this movie. The film leaves you with nothing more than a couple of famous one-liners, and a few moments when it actually gets gory enough to feel like Mortal Kombat. It's still worth watching if you're a fan of the Mortal Kombat universe and have played the games, or just love gory action hand-to-hand combat movies. However, if, if this is your first journey through the combat universe, you might want to skip this or just have it play in the background as you work or study from home.